Okay. So welcome to ClickHouse release webinar. Let me share my screen. Uh, this webinar is going to be quite unusual. Okay, uh, here it is. Uh, today we have our release 22.2. What it is? Uh, it is, by the way, it is 22.2, not 22.1. What it is? This is just our regular stable release for February. Uh, so let me uh, let me describe what is new in this release. And if you ask me, tell me what are the top five features? Can you select the top five? I don't want you to, to go through uh, every item in the change log. It will be it will be like this. Uh, actually, we have plenty of new features and the most interesting are functions for test classification, flexible memory limits, some settings for file creation, custom settings for deduplication on insert and ephemeral columns. Uh, on previous webinar, I was always presenting, but today I am in a different location. By the way, most of ClickHouse team has been relocated uh, from Moscow to Amsterdam. It is not, not the news, just to let you know why I don't have this mighty sofa in my background. Uh, today I have just just our new office. It is also quite beautiful, uh, but probably not beautiful as my Moscow apartment. Uh, and how we are going to tell you about all these new features. Uh, I would like to, to meet you with ClickHouse developers to let our developers to explain what they are doing by themselves. So what was the first? Uh, the first was text classification functions. And it was implemented by Nikolai, Nikolai Dekterinsky from my team. Uh, Nikolai, are you here? Are you ready to, uh, to tell everyone about this wonderful feature? So where is Nikolai? I don't see Nikolai. He will join a few minutes, a few minutes later. So let's uh, let's continue with uh, something uh, more interesting about uh, inserting into table functions for data export, and uh, the new settings are contributed by. Pavel Kruglov. Uh, Pavel, are you ready? Okay. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I will stop sharing so you uh, you can tell the audience about what is new. Okay, I'm going to tell you about uh, some new features in table functions file S3 and HDFS. So let's start with the uh, table function file. When you insert uh, into this table function, the data just appends to the one file. But there is a problem here because there are some data formats that don't support append at all. For example, uh, formats parquet, org, or arrow don't support appends. Uh, so if we append some data to file with such format, we will not be able to read data from it properly. Now, if you try to append to a file uh, in a format that doesn't support append, ClickHouse just throw an exception and say that, sorry, we can do this. But now you can uh, enable new setting to allow this table function to create uh, a new file on each insert. This setting is called engine file, allow create multiple files. 
uh, and uh, all subsequent selects uh, will read data from all created files. Uh, the next table function, uh, table function S3. Previously, each new insert will wrote, overwrote existing file with the new data. Now we throw an exception in attempt to overwrite a file and uh, present a new setting called S3, S3 tr truncate on insert uh, that allows you to overwrite uh, files in S3. Also, uh, now you can create a new file on each insert into S3 table function. Uh, there is a special setting for it. Uh, and all subsequent selects will read data from all created files in S3. And finally, HDFS temp function. Previously, it just threw an exception in attempt to write data to existing file. And there was no way to over overwrite it. Now you can uh, turn on new setting called HDFS truncate on insert. And uh, the setting allow you to overwrite existing files. And uh, just like in a three table function, now you can create a new uh, file on each insert into HDFS by enabling, enabling new settings called uh, HDFS create new file on insert. Pavel, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are, are you, or do you have some slides that you want to share along with this? No, we don't have slides. Okay. Cool. Just wanted to double check since there was a couple of questions in chat about it. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't prepare any slides about it. I guess that's all about new settings in table functions. Okay. Uh, so what is the next? Uh, let me continue uh, sharing. So, uh, let me explain uh, custom deduplication settings uh, for insert. Uh, if you do insert into uh, replicated merge tree, uh, if you want to have exactly one semantic, and when you insert data, uh, you can receive success. And if you receive success, data uh, was successfully inserted. You can receive exception. If you received exception, data was not inserted. There is uh, some third uh, situation when you uh, don't receive uh, no confirmation and no exception. It, uh, for example, if connection was broken. In this case, we support uh, to allow you to submit the same block of data with the same exactly the same content and if it was already inserted it will be deduplicated uh, deduplication works by uh, hash of the block content uh, but now we have a new option uh, a setting for custom deduplication key you can provide arbitrary uh, key arbitrary string for deduplication instead of data hash. It can be useful, for example, if you insert uh, into table and uh, into materialized view. Uh, if data is significantly aggregated and you do, don't want excessive deduplication uh, in materialized view, you can provide your own deduplication key. Okay, let's go to the next participant. So let me look at the list of attendees. Uh, and the next will be Nikolai uh, Kochetov. Nikolai, are you ready? Uh, yes, I can tell about a couple of features. Okay, uh, please uh, share start, my screen. Uh, start video. Start sharing if you if you have something to share. Yes, I have no slides, uh, but uh, I think I will share some examples, uh, like from working ClickHouse server, and I will tell about uh, two features connected uh, with insertion. Uh, we have a, a few small features uh, which was the last release, and uh, the last the first one 
is very simple. Uh, it is about uh, default uh, keyword for uh, insert statement. Uh, let's imagine we have a table. Uh, it is with two columns uh, with default values, X and Y. Uh, and uh, as usual, we can insert uh, values indeed. Uh, we can specify some set of columns, for example, A, or Z, or X. And uh, those columns which are not mentioned will be used as default values. Like I can write insert int uh, um, tab x uh, values one. And when I select uh, everything from table, uh, sorry, we see that uh, we have uh, value one for, for column X and ABC for value Y. Uh, but actually, sometimes it's not uh, comfortable. Sometimes we want, for example, in one row set default for column X and in another row set default for column Y. And for that uh, purpose, uh, for Values format we support its a special default keyword, and so now you can insert a table like that. I can say that, for example, in the first row, default will be. Uh, by the way, can you scroll down, please? I don't see this example. With wow. Insert. Okay, I, I think I cannot scroll down because, uh, like, the full screen is. Uh, keep it. I will try to split it somehow like there. Maybe you can okay, see. Okay, much better. Okay, cool. So when I run this query, now we can see that, uh, like in the first row, we used default from Y. In the second row, we used default from X. And in the last row, we used default for both columns. So this simple feature works. It was implemented by external contributor, Andre. Virchevsky, and you can use it very handy. Uh, let's look at another one example. Let's imagine that we want to insert JSON into this table. But uh, of course, when you want to insert JSON, you cannot store this. You would not like to store JSON into a table. You would like to uh, separate it into different columns. If we have a JSON like that, uh, I would like to, for example, take some element from array and uh, take uh, some string from uh, from map. And uh, to insert this uh, JSON, you, we can have uh, like different options. Uh, the first option we can use input function. And uh, it works. I can show you the query which can insert it. But for that, I should exit ClickHouse client and uh, use uh, some uh, like uh, tricks. Uh, in this query, I can use input function, which tells that I read from input a uh, single column of type string uh, with name Z. And from this column, I can extract uh, different uh, values using functions JSON extract. Here it is uint and string. And this query will work. Uh, and we will insert in the table uh, specified values. Let's do it. When I do this ClickHouse client, now I can see that like new values was added, but you probably cannot see it right there. Like, let me retry. I will translate table. Uh, sorry, spelling. Insert again, and we can see that uh, values from JSON was successfully inserted. But it is also not very handy. Sometimes we just want to insert raw JSON values, and only then, like automatically extract uh, the same JSONs from the same table. And for this purpose, we have added a special uh, type of column, which is called ephemeral. Uh, let me demonstrate it. I will recreate table. Uh, 
uh, here is our new create station uh, statement. And here I specified JSON extract functions as default values. And also I have added a special column Z, Z with a ephemeral type. And now when I insert into this table, I may only specify column Z and uh, column X and Y will be, uh, will use the uh, default uh, from Z. Uh, let me try this. Uh, I can run this statement and we can check that the values were inserted. And uh, what's nice about this query? We have special column Z in the table, but it is actually never stored. It is used only for inserts. And when you select uh, from this table, select star X also shows this column not, not existing. So we can use it more, more handy way and uh, we wouldn't store JSONs in the table if we don't need it. And uh, this feature also was implemented by external contributor, uh, Jakob Falichowski, and it just works. Uh, very nice. So I suppose that's all for like uh, improvements about insert statements. Uh, I probably can also demonstrate some feature uh, which is not in the current release, but uh, which can be added to the next release very soon. It is almost finished. What is this feature? I'm very interested. <laughs> uh, this is feature, actually not a feature, it's just improvement uh, for performance uh, in case we insert into table with S3 policy. Uh, let me like demonstrate it. First of all, uh, probably everybody knows that uh, ClickHouse storage support multiple disk policies, and is, it is very useful in case if you have uh, hot and uh, old data, like you can store hot data into SSD, for example, and uh, already uh, cold data into S3 and uh, specifying multiple storage policies, it will automatically work. We will move data, like which is not hot anymore, in this tree, and uh, queries still will work on top of it. But actually, it is just possible to specify only one policy, like only S3, and work with table as if it is completely stored on this uh, blob storage. Uh, but uh, like if you just uh, try to insert into this table data, uh, right now it may do it pretty slowly. Uh, to demonstrate a table restart server, like with all the ClickHouse version, and uh, try to run insert select query. Uh, I have like uh, default tables, uh, with uh, ClickHouse Metrica data into a special data site database. Uh, yeah, show. Ah, sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> First of all, I should uh, drop a previous table because this feature with ephemeral columns so new that it is not present in old version I will use. Uh, so what happened? Uh, yeah, I should restart server, like. Uh, for what reason? Uh, I restarted it just uh, to show how slow worked uh, insert select query previously. Ah. So here I have two tables, like uh, hits uh, one for the time obfuscated, and the same table, which works on top of S3 disk. Uh, I can show create table for this. Mm. 
and you can see many pol uh, columns and uh, storage policy S3 data. Uh, right now, we can run this in search select query, and at first, it will look like it works pretty fast, like almost uh, 500 megabytes per second, but it will not continue for a long time. And uh, we can check it like with this stat column command that actually not so many data is being sent into S3. And right now it shows real speed like 60 megabytes per second, which is uh, not impressive at all. Okay, it's so slow. Please cancel this query. Uh, let's uh, check the new version. Yeah, let's restart server right now. Uh, and see what have been improved. Uh, right now, also we can see like 500 megabytes per second, but uh, this value will be decreased a little bit. But right now we have almost stable 300 megabytes. And uh, the start, uh, oops, I have canceled it. Let's run it again. again. Now the start uh, shows uh, much uh, better values. I do not know if you can see it, but it tells that uh, we insert uh, like about 100 megabytes per second into S3. So it's already uh, not completely, but pretty close to like my current uh, network capabilities. So that's all what I wanted to show. Like, you know, this query is not very slow right now. Uh, yeah, it's much better, and at least performance is sustained. Okay, just to summarize, uh, Nikolai ha has demonstrated three uh, new improvements. Uh, two improvements for insert uh, queries. One is the default keyword. You can write default keyword instead of a value in values uh, format. And it will substitute default statement, just like in MySQL. Uh, so you are uh, pretty familiar with this feature. Another is ephemeral column. Uh, it is a special type of column that is only available for insert. You can insert into this column. It can be used to calculate expressions, but you cannot select from this column, pretty interesting. And, uh, and the last one about performance improvement. Okay, let's continue. Uh, what about text classification functions from Nikolai, another Nikolai from my team? We have more than one Nikolai. Nikolai, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, please. Uh... So I have some uh, slides, which I can show you just to start. So uh, in this version, we added uh, some new uh, text classification function. It is still uh, goes under uh, experimental flag. So you uh, sh should set allow experimental NLP functions uh, to make it work. Uh, so the first function is uh, the tech language, pretty easy. So we have some stream in UTF-8 uh, formats and we want to know uh, uh, like what language is uh, it and we uh, can't really understand it. So it's, it is now pretty, pretty easy to know in ClickHouse, we just use this function, uh, we can uh, pass some const string or some uh, mm, column and uh, get uh, the results. So if we want to know a little bit more about the text that was given, so for example, part of the text is uh, in uh, one language uh, and the other part is in other language. So we can use uh, the tech language mixed uh, function and uh, get a map uh, where uh, 
languages so will be uh, mapped to a percentage of uh, uh, which they uh, are in the text. So yeah, it's it's worth mentioning that uh, a big part of the work uh, was made by uh, contributor Sergei uh, Katkowski. Um, so it was all about UTF voice uh, um, eight strings. But if we do not know the char set of uh, some bytes that we have, uh, we can now know what the char set is and uh, what language it corresponds to, like most probably. Uh, the last two functions are uh, first is detect tonality. Uh, currently only works with the Russian language. Uh, in future, I hope we will uh, add uh, English and other languages. Uh, so yeah, it returns a float value from minus one to one. And the last uh, interesting uh, function is uh, detect pro programming language. So uh, if we have some text in some programming language, we can easily detect what language is uh, it. Uh, so, may I ask you a question? For what reason sure. do we need these functions in ClickHouse for tonality in Russian language and for programming languages? Why do uh, we need to detect programming languages in ClickHouse? maybe for some study you do on your uh, spare time uh i don't know it's just fun <laughs> okay cool yeah it's always great to have some fun so we can try to uh, try it out right now so first of all if we just uh, try to use this uh, uh is it a new version i suppose that they, it may be not you i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> uh, let's are... try uh, so uh, there is no such function So, okay. Yeah, um, I'm using the old version and uh, it is still not added. Uh, uh, it looks like, uh, like this is uh, the version 22.2. Uh, maybe I can demonstrate these functions on the yeah <laughs> on the uh, really latest version let me let me try to do it okay one moment so i have a server where some clickhouse version is installed and this is the version 22.3. So it is even more new uh, than the current release. And we have a plenty of plenty of data sets on this server. Uh, for, for example, I have a table. Uh, with a snapshot of all postings and comments from Hacker News. Hacker News is one of my favorite uh, websites. So I have a snapshot of it in my disposal in ClickHouse. And let me try some query. Uh, here is a column named text. Uh, it contains like uh, a comment and I want to detect language of this column and I will use limit 
by expression that will output one text for every distinct distinct language okay by the way nikolai what do you think uh will it work successfully or not uh you i are... can't really see the um uh, query uh now can you see the query uh yes okay and what do you think it probably will work uh we can place a bet uh will it work or not uh, because you are the developer of this feature so you have to place a bet for a positive result but let me also ask our audience because today we have very unusual meetup and we can place our bets even for positive and negative results so we are just improvising uh, please put your bet in the chat and we will count how many people will think that it will work successfully how many people will think it will not work and in the meantime i will do it uh first this yeah. is experimental feature and it has to be explicitly enabled let me enable it uh, now you have a second chance to place this bet if you did not please do and let's check what will happen well looks like it works and that and it is quite fast and we see so half half a gigabyte a second uh, pretty good performance but does it work correctly or not and how exactly does it work so it uh, detected that this is english yes it looks like english and this is un what is un maybe it's U a language of united nations no it's uh, unknown unknown okay by the way maybe it's one of <laughs> in one of the languages official languages of united nations actually it looks like english okay and this is no what is no norwegian uh it is not english because it does not look like a correct english maybe it is really norwegian uh, and this is id what is id what is this language and sq is so it <laughs> all the language codes are official uh, two symbol uh, iso codes and you can pretty easily know what language is it just mm, look on wikipedia or something okay i will not look into wikipedia i would like to think that sq is a language of some nation of square islands is there this nation i don't know i like wikipedia but Okay, and this looks like Thai language. Yes, pretty, pretty similar. At least it works. And this is like a success. Okay, let me stop sharing and we will continue to the next feature. It's about flexible memory limits. Uh, this is developed by Dmitry. Uh, Dmitry, welcome. Are you ready? Uh, yep. So let me share my screen. So, uh, do you see it? Uh, yeah, perfectly. Uh, so, uh, what is it about? Uh, uh, currently, each uh, query has uh, 
hard memory limit set to 10 gigabytes. Why do we have it? Because we can't just allow any query to use all the memory and we need to limit memory usage of queries and Currently, it was supposed that uh, users uh, should uh, set uh, uh, hard limit uh, in some reasonable way for their uh, usage. Uh, but uh, it's really hard to find the correct um, uh, hard limit. For example, if uh, your uh, uh, server has uh, 100 gigabytes uh, RAM, uh, you can't just uh, allow each query to use uh, uh, all the memory. So uh, the idea of this uh, change is uh, uh, to introduce some um, guaranteed uh, uh, level of uh, memory which uh, uh, query may use. Um, uh, it's uh, introduced as uh, settings uh, called like uh, max guaranteed memory usage, uh, max guaranteed memory usage for user. And um, uh, each query is allowed to uh, allocate more memory than uh, this uh, soft uh, limit. Uh, but uh, in the situation when uh, uh, hard limit is reached, uh, we uh, need to uh, free some of our memory. Uh, so uh, in this situation, we uh, start to choose uh, which uh, uh, query uh, has uh, um, uh, uh, overcommitted uh, more memory. Uh, it means like we uh, calculate our commit ratio and uh, find uh, the query with the biggest one uh, and uh, kill it. Um, but as you can see, I have uh, two more lines in my uh, slide. Uh, it's about uh, settings, uh, memory usage or commit uh, maximum uh, time. Uh, timeout. Um, why do you have it? Because uh, once a hard limit is reached, uh, and we have uh, chosen some um, uh, query to stop, uh, any other query uh, at that moment can uh, try to uh, allocate some more uh, memory, and uh, we allow uh, uh, this um, query to wait uh, this amount of time until uh, the uh, chosen query uh, stopped. So uh, if uh, uh, this query stopped within uh, uh, timeout, uh, we allow uh, query to allocate more memory uh, and uh, to continue execution. If uh, this uh, timeout is over and the query is not stopped, uh, then uh, we stop the query which uh, tries to allocate memory. Uh, at this point, I need to apologize. Uh, I don't have an uh, example uh, of uh, usage uh, of this feature because uh, I was told about it uh, uh, very soon, so I didn't Don't have worry. enough time. I already told people that today our meetup is very unusual. So your presentation is also very unusual. And what we are going to do is just to explain what memory commit is for. What is the purpose of this feature? I can explain it. So, uh, you know that in Treehouse there is max memory usage setting that is by default equals to 10 gigabytes. 
But what if you have a server with half a terabyte of memory or even several terabytes of memory? Do you want to limit every query to just 10 gigabytes? If you run only one query at the same time, probably it's a good idea to allow for this query to use this terabyte of memory, right? But what if it already used this terabyte of memory and you have a second query that also wants to allocate just a few gigabytes? The solution is to allow queries to use more memory than there is a hard limit. They will overcommit memory usage. And if there are more queries, the most overcommitted queries will be terminated. That's it. Pretty, pretty easy, uh, pretty good idea. So thank you for implementing this feature. By the way, uh, is it available in version 22.2? Mm, I think yes. Yeah. Uh, what is the status? Is it ready for uh, production? Currently, we consider this uh, feature as experimental because uh, I have uh, some ideas how to improve it. So uh, we want to keep it experimental. Okay. And I want everyone from our audience to wish Dmitry good luck for improving this feature. So please write in the chat uh, your wish, best wishes for Dmitry. And uh, uh, Dmitry, if you have nothing uh, more, let's continue to the next uh, very interesting features. And now let's meet another ClickHouse developer, uh, Ksenia. Ksenia, are you ready? Uh, yes, hello. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, one second. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about one feature, which is not in this release, but it will be in the next release. So it is local cache for remote file system. Uh, now it is implemented only for S3. Like, as you know, you have an ability to uh, store your data, data not uh, in local file system, but also in S3. HDFS and uh, as a group of storage. So now uh, we have local cache for those whole systems and uh, it will be available from the next release. Uh, so what is this? Uh, this is a performance comparison uh, from our benchmark. And um, here what you can see, um, here you can see a version 22 and two, but um, as I told, it will be available from the next release. Uh, so uh, what does it mean? Uh, here you have uh, first three columns. Uh, this is uh, three consecutive runs of the same query, which is written on the left. And um, the first uh, column is uh, the run without any cache. And uh, the next two runs are consecutive runs uh, with cache. And uh, columns from four to six, uh, are the same three consecutive runs, uh, but for a uh, non-cached version. So uh, what you can see is that even the first runs with cache and uh, without cache are very different. Um, uh, the red uh, color means uh, how much uh, worse in uh, performance uh, version without cache is. and uh, the darker the color, uh, the worse it is. Uh, so a short disclaimer is that uh, this uh, benchmark was uh, executed uh, with ClickHouse server on one region and uh, S3 on another region. So if uh, they are both in the same region, then uh, the difference uh, will be uh, somewhat smaller. Um, but uh, for now, I have only this benchmark. Uh, so um 
Uh, let's see at uh, the first columns uh, on the cached version and non cached version. Um, you see that, um, like, uh, when the first queries were executed, um, there was not much difference. Like, cached version a little bit uh, slower than non cached version, but the difference is rather small. But uh, then, when there are more queries, um, you see that the uh, cached version starts to be 20 times better than non cached version. It's because uh, we hit the cache and uh, uh, the query all, only read th those parts from S3, which uh, it didn't hit uh, and read from cache. Uh, so it partially reads from cache and partially reads uh, in non cache where there are non cache hits. Um, so when the benchmark started, uh, you see that there are cache hits, uh, but uh, not all the time. But uh, after a few queries, it starts to hit uh, a lot. And for example, here you see that uh, the query is like the first query uh, when it's um, non-cached run, it's already 77 times better. So this is a huge improvement. Um, here you also see the difference. So the first column and the fourth column are, are versions without cache and uh, the latest columns are like much better because uh, there's like almost 100% cache hit. Um, therefore there's like uh, in some places the difference is 200 times. I think uh, the hugest difference is here 222 times better. Mm, so that's it. And uh, probably it will be even improved in the future because uh, this is not finished and uh, there are some optimizations in mind uh, which were not yet finished. So here you can see, for example, um, a small difference, uh, like not a small, but uh, some slowdown when the cache was loaded, but uh, this is probably because um, it needed um, more size, which uh, was in cache and uh, some cache files were evicted. Uh, so it took more time, but as you can see, it was only once in the whole benchmark and mostly there are cache hits. Okay, uh, this is just amazing. Uh, by the way, uh, this is what I value the most for ClickHouse, performance and performance improvements. I can say that um, typical developers do new features, but really strong developers, only really strong developers can do performance improvements. Okay, thank you. So uh, we still have a time for one more presentation. It is from Vladimir. Vladimir, are you ready? Yeah, hi. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I'll speak about uh, some features that uh, like uh, uh, under implementing now, it will appear like uh, in uh, future releases, uh, not, not in current release, but maybe in uh, some future releases. Um, one of improvements that uh, like I'm doing right now is uh, uh, fixing tests for ARM64 ARM and um, like uh, on, on slide, you can see uh, the, the current status, we have a bunch of uh, broken tests that, that don't work on uh, ARM platform, but uh, uh, some of them uh, were fixed uh, this week and uh, some of them will be fixed uh, after merging some uh, PRs and uh, we still have to do and some to do's and uh, we will continue fixing it and uh, we hope in the nearest future uh, all test uh, all our test will, will be um, passed on uh, ARM64. 
and uh, actually uh, uh, fixing this test not, not only uh, gives improvement not only for ARM platform but uh, also for ClickHouse at all. For example, uh, some of uh, these tests uh, were failed because of real bugs, bugs and uh, like uh, uh, th that can occur on other platforms. So these bugs will be fixed too, and also. Um, uh, it helps us to improve like our testing infrastructure and uh, for some tests uh, don't require real fixes but just need to be uh, disabled because some libraries uh, don't support it on ARM and uh, uh, we a bit improved our test infrastructure now you can disable some tests not only for debug build but uh, depending on feature that supported by um, particular clickhouse binary uh, so uh, it, it also like uh, improvement not only arm yeah i can add uh, that adding a new platform is not just compiling clickhouse it's a huge undertaking to make 100 percent of our test suite uh, to work and vladimir is Currently in 99, and how many nines? Mm. Last time I counted, it was about 3,000 of 500 and, and something. Uh, uh, so we have just about 20 of uh, failed tests out of 3,000 and a half. Pretty good. Yeah, this list is almost full, full test, almost all tests that. Uh, I fail it on ARM and it, it fit on one slide, so <laughs> I suppose it's it's okay. Uh, yeah, and also a couple of uh, other features that under development right now is um, one of it. It's uh, adding uh, more function for map data type. Uh, it, it would be like functions uh, uh, like uh, like we have array map and array filter. We will uh, implement. Um, uh, same uh, functions for map data type and uh, its feature developed by external contributor and uh, it's uh, now this PR is, is open but uh, I suppose we will finish it like uh, in the nearest future and uh, other one feature is um, a new uh, join algorithm that would works with uh, um, particular uh, database engines that supports the key value request uh, and um, we will start with uh, uh, storage rocks db and we will use uh, a feature of rocks db uh, to, to make key value request and uh, we will try to implement join using this key value request and look uh, if it would be uh, work uh, how it would, would work and um, yeah, it's feature under development and I just uh, uh, finished some minor refactoring to prepare uh, this week to prepare a code, code base like to implement this feature and it will be continued and we will see it in uh, some of next releases here. Yeah. That's it from me. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, you can stop sharing. So for me, the most interesting is uh, joining with key value tables. Uh, currently, it, it works, but it does not use the fact that you can do fast key value requests. So I hope it will be also implemented quite soon. Uh, maybe in the next release, 22.3. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Uh, and now we have about five minutes for questions. Uh, Chris uh, or uh, Claire, could you help me with the questions? Yeah, we get a we get a bunch of questions, so we'll see how many we get through. Um, I'll try to group them again a little bit into into the different topics. Um, first, we had a few questions on deduplication. A question from Andre. Um, 
for the custom deduplication key, will ClickHouse store all the values of the specified key in the RAM for some time window or some number of data blocks? Um, that time Zookeeper or ClickHouse Keeper will not participate in the deduplication? Uh, deduplication with uh, custom key works with the same mechanism as deduplication with a block hash. So custom key will be used instead of a block hash, but it will be stored in Zookeeper for replicated tables in the same way as it already worked. It will be stored on disk for non-replicated merge tree tables, exactly the same as it already work. You just specify uh, some custom key instead of automatically calculated hash sum of a block. Okay. And a follow-up question from Andre. What is the syntax for specifying this key? Is it a setting for the table? Uh, yes, it is the setting that is named insert deduplication token. By the way, I want uh, I wanted to say that this uh, feature has been contributed by uh, Igor uh, Igor Nikonov. Uh, it uh, it was reviewed by by me, but we have uh, to uh, to praise uh, to acknowledge uh, Igor for this work. Nice. Um, and Gia is asking if the insertion deduplication then requires a key for each row. No, it works on block basis. Uh, so you provide this uh, deduplication token for uh, insert statement. And it will be applied for, uh, so for the whole batch of inserted records. You, uh, you can insert retry insertion with the same batch, uh, probably the same batch, and the same key. And if data with the same key was already inserted, it will not be inserted again. It will be deduplicated. OK. Um... A question on language detection by Dale. Does it use an existing model like CLD3? Uh, yeah, language detection is using CLD2. And you may ask, why do you use CLD2 instead of CLD3? Uh, actually, they are using different algorithms and they have different uh, applications. CLD3 is more, uh, more slow and uh, somewhat more accurate, but only slightly. So we decided to use more fast algorithm for ClickHouse because ClickHouse has to be fast. <laughs> Indeed. Um, there were a few questions um, on how the caching uh, works from object storage, if it's limited by storage or memory. Um, I think Nikolai already answered in the in the chat, but maybe it's it's good to also answer it um, live. And Dima on YouTube was asking um, if we somehow need to limit the cache. Uh, you define the size of cache, and cache is using a file system and also memory. Uh, it is using local file system, and the data that is written into local file system is also cached in memory in page cache. Also, I want to say that this cache is uh, write true. So when you write data, it will be written also into cache. So the next uh, select queries will already start, uh, start to use this cache, starting from the first query, not from the second, but from the first. All right. And Nicola just answered in chat that the cache eviction policy is just standard LRU, so not too complicated. Um, moving on to some, uh, some other questions. Um, Ali is asking a very popular question that I think comes up every time. Is ClickHouse Keeper ready for production? Uh, it is 
not ready for production for this moment of time. I can say that it is 99% ready for production, but you know that 99 is not equal to 100. When it will be 100% ready for production, I will say that it is ready for production. Nevertheless, Click Housekeeper is already used in production by some users, by the most brave of them. And what do we need to say that it is ready for production? We need more experiences. We need more operation experiences from your operations, from your production. So if you are ready to start using it in production today, it will help to make it production ready. Yes, please try it out when you can. Um, let's maybe do two more questions. Um, one question from Ricky. How is the JSON column data type coming along? Oh, it's very interesting. This is planned for uh, the first quarter of this year. So probably one of a few next releases. Uh, this is the most interesting because it allows you to store semi-structured data inside ClickHouse. You can load arbitrary JSONs with arbitrary nesting. And ClickHouse will automatically derive the types, automatically store every path inside JSON into uh, in a separate column. And you will be able to use natural uh, syntax for querying. By the way, I have a slide. I have a slide for that. You may wonder why my colleagues are demonstrating something, but why not, not me? Let me, let me share my screen and show this slide. One moment. It will take not, not, not too long, just my, maybe, maybe one minute. Yeah, here it is. So you will be able to create uh, a column with JSON data type. Types will be automatically inferred. Uh, and you will be able to use natural syntax for querying JSON data. You already can store JSON inside string field. And we already have functions for extracting data from JSON like this. Or we already have support for SQL JSON that can be applied for JSON inside string field. But first, it is not as fast as if you use uh, the natural JSON data type. And second, it is not as convenient. Just compare, compare this and this. So how does it work? Uh, it will be it will automatically extract all the unique uh, path inside JSON and automatically derive the types, even if the types are multi-dimensional arrays. Clickhouse will do it on insert and it will unify the data types during the background merges. So if you have something like integer and float they will be unified as float. And you can have some columns with strict schema and some columns with flexible JSON data type. It is very useful, for example, for logs. In logs, you usually have some predefined columns like timestamp, hostname, uh, metric name, 
but also you have something like message and message can contain whatever and probably you don't even want to care what message will contain you will just specify that it has json data type and you will be able to query it dynamically this is planned for first quarter so probably will be released in march this year if we will be lucky very exciting um also a lot of um, very excited comments in the chat a lot of people are waiting for this um last question then uh, my favorite question that i always leave to the very end a question from constantine any plans for cloud clickhouse in near future from clickhouse inc yes this is what clickhouse inc as a company for uh, probably it's a short answer but the answer is yes that's it all right excellent so thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed i hope you have uh, have been entertained see you next time And Chris, uh, uh, please copy all the questions from chat. Uh, we can stop streaming. <laughs>